All right, it is so good to be back at Berlin Buzzwords. Good to see you all here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kate Osher, and I'm a developer advocate. And I work at Viverica, which is a Berlin-based tech company, and they built and maintain the open source project Apache Flink, as well as a related integrated platform called the Viverica platform, which provides analytics and streamlines deployments and other operations for Flink. I live in Portland, Oregon. It's so nice and early here. <laughs> And I got started with stream processing back in 2017 when I was a software engineer at a large data analytics company. And my team there built that company's first stream processing data pipeline in production using Flink. There was very little stream processing in general there, so it was a pretty steep learning curve, but also, of course, very worth it. You know, I'm here now. And it also means, though, that I have a particular soft spot for hearing about people's early adoption stories and having been through some of the pain points. I'm very focused on trying to make all that a bit easier and hopefully a little bit more fun too. And I got to know my current coworkers when I became a fairly regular speaker at their conferences and I got just completely hooked once I met that uh, open source community around it. Really the only downside of working for them is I guess I have to like squirrels now as that's our mascot, uh, which of course in all fairness is pretty cute. So I know we have a lot of uh, a large German speaking audience today, but for anyone who's not, uh, the rough translation of the word flink in German means nimble. So really highlighting the flexibility and speed of, of the framework. And since this is meant to be a very beginner friendly talk, I'll start with some very quick introduction uh, on flink for anyone who's unfamiliar and uh, I promise it'll be fast. And then I'll, I'll mainly be highlighting just the parts that are gonna pertain to today's topic. So next I'll discuss why to use Flink SQL. So why it's a good starting point and what some of its strengths are. And then lastly, our demo will include just the most straightforward process possible for jumping right in and being able to just build your own data pipelines in just a couple quick steps with Flink SQL. So firstly, what even is Flink? Um, on the highest level, it is a stateful, fully distributed processing engine for both batch and stream processing and more precisely, you know, for bounded and unbounded data streams. Its strengths are in its scalability, its high performance, so think computations done at in-memory speed, and various features like exactly once guarantees and robust high availability options that allow for just those really high levels of data accuracy and reliability. Additionally, there is an ever-growing ecosystem around Flink of libraries, connectors, uh, other features and partnerships with different complementary tools and software that have really enabled it to fit into a pretty wide variety of different use cases and pre-existing systems. Um, specifically, it can be run on pretty much any common cluster environment. So Hadoop, Yarn, Mesos, Kubernetes can also be run up as a standalone cluster and its uh, timing and state features are really where it shines. So it allows kind of that extra, for, uh, extra flexibility for what kinds of applications it can be run on. And as part of this ecosystem, Flink has a series of APIs. So the higher level the API, the more concise, but the less expressive and vice versa. So the most expressive is our lowest level process functions. And that's gonna support Flink's uh, precision timing, event, and any state related functionality. And on the mid-level is the data stream API, which powers the unified batch and streaming functions. So anything related to windowing, exactly once, et cetera. And this is where your maps, reduces, aggregations, anything like that's gonna take place. The table API and the SQL client are gonna make up that highest level, the relational APIs here. And that's of course what I'll be getting into later. And both of these are really optimized for unified batch and streaming processing. So the queries are just gonna be the same regardless of which processing type you're using. And they're also both based on Apache Cal Calcite. So they are also ANSI or standard SQL compliant. Taking a little quick step back though. So why is it important to have and provide this unified batch and streaming solution? So unifying this allows users to be able to reuse code and logic across both batch and streaming processing. Um, so, you know, it's just going to make it a lot easier to integrate different applications, different systems, but it also, it helps ensure that semantics are going to be consistent. So you don't have to learn a totally new API for each processing mode or for each layer of abstraction. And it means you can just simplify your operations and keep your configs, keep your processes the same across all these different systems. So especially for any distributed system, it's just, it's all about that simplification. And of course it enables you to mix your historical and your real-time data. 
And for the architecture, it will look a little bit different depending on what use case it's for and whether it's a batch or streaming scenario. But these are pretty common examples for both a batch on the left, I assume it's left depending on the mirroring here. Um, and then of course for our streaming scenario on the other side. So in our batch example, we have our recorded or historical events. And although these are queried periodically, Flink's really precision timing capabilities enable this to be done pretty efficiently. And on the streaming scenario, it's gonna rely a bit more heavily on Flink's internal state functionality. And the most typical use cases for all this is event-driven applications, data analytics applications, and data pipeline apps. And as for its state, it uses a very unique checkpointing and save pointing mechanism system that uh, I won't really have time to go into here, but there's a lot of great talks on that. Uh, the main benefit of that, or at least my favorite benefit, because I, I really like geeking out about it, is that it enables that exactly once guarantees on the data, but moreover that it's it's actually scalable with very minimal performance overhead because of that checkpointing mechanism system. Um, and then even if you're using the more abstracted SQL version, I do think it's kind of nice just so you have an idea of, of what a typical um, code block for this is going to look like and kind of know what's going on under the hood here. So this is a typical but very simplified <laughs> code version for just a really basic Flink data pipeline. This is not using the SQL client. Again, just to kind of show you the code version of that architecture we just looked at. So starting off with reading in from a source, uh, Kafka topic is the most common along with Pulsar. Um, next is this very, very simplified representation of business logic for in the Flink app itself. So doing a couple of basic transforms, uh, maps and reduces being the most common to start with. And then moving on to specifying what you want by key by and configuring for your windowing settings. And obviously there's a lot more in between typically, but um, you're, you know, so dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and then, uh, but then you're gonna be designating your sinks as the last bit there. So that again is just typically what that process looks like. So with all that, so sounds, you know, there's all of these great benefits. Um, why are we focusing on Flink SQL and not everything else in Flink? And uh, for me, that actually kind of answers itself for this talk because um, with everything else in Flink, there is so much going on there. And that is what makes it such a powerful and flexible tool. But it also means it's really nice to have an option that allows you to just really jump right in and start building something that can leverage those strengths without having to learn the entire thing, learn the ecosystem, learn the code, and the framework and do that whole deep dive. So that code example, you know, as I said, was very simplified. There's gonna be more going on there. Um, it's gonna be a bit language dependent and requires more dependencies. And on a basic level, you know, having a powerful IDE and build tools and everything. So for Flink SQL, um, I will go into some of its strengths in a moment, but um, really I wanna emphasize it's all about simplifying your development. So. That is our theme, keeping it simple. And the uh, its capability is, is actually very stable too. So it's we've been adding Flink SQL features for about six years. And as I mentioned, it's based on Calcite. So it does support that regular SQL. So the learning curve is just absolutely minimal if you have any other SQL experience or database experience. Um, as for the actual benefits of combining SQL with a powerful streaming engine, so we've covered you know batch and streaming, distributed systems, that's really great. Um, really, it's, you know, users can focus now on the business logic of being able to still do a powerful streaming system, but not have to worry about all those implementation details. And along with the fact that it's just SQL, your, de your developers don't have to be Java or Scala experts. They don't have to worry about switching your code over to Java or Scala or Python if that's not what you're working in. So it makes it just incredibly lightweight and gives developers a bit more autonomy so they can just jump in without any of that. And for some of the real world use cases, I've got a couple examples here of, of some companies that are using Flink SQL. We see a lot of people building uh, more unified pipelines for online and offline model training, uh, independently building end-to-end -end streaming analytics pipelines, and, and specifically without having to depend on a, a specific engineering or operations team just for your uh, pipeline building. And uh, also just being able to more easily generate features for machine learning model training in general. And one thing I like is kind of comparing the difference between a regular SQL engine versus a streaming one. So regular one, 
a regular database, you're going to execute your query at a certain point in time. The engine then takes a snapshot of the table at the time the query is run, and then computes the results based on that static snapshot, and then the query terminates. So pretty straightforward there. Uh, but with the SQL one, the query is continuous. So you first deploy your query, then whenever the data is added to the table, the changes are continuously ingested, and the results are also continuously updated. The query keeps running, and it never finishes until you actually cancel the job. So it just, you know, it's streaming. So it just keeps going. And uh, keeping with that level of simplicity, so I wanted to include this example. This is an example of sessionizing a click stream and count on counting on the number of clicks per session. And we've got on one side here the regular Flink using the data stream API versus the exact same thing using Flink SQL. Um, so I think this is a pretty powerful comparison. And with you know, Flink's other APIs, as I said, their queries are going to be dependent on a table program written either in Java or Scala. So you're going to have those build tool dependencies for submitting to the cluster. Whereas Flink SQL, all writing, debugging, submitting any sort of table program to a Flink cluster is just done. You, you barely even notice the Flink cluster, honestly. Um, plus, you get some nice visualizations just all in the command line. So just to recap, so basically, you get this high-level, relational-like way to query your data streams. And it's more likely you're already going to know it. You've got this unified batch and streaming option, and you can process. So yeah, processing historical and real-time data without having to change any of your logic there. And um, you've got this super, super simple option. You can build all of these complicated applications with that same performance, scalability, and consistency of any other Flink program um, without having to do all the implementation overhead. So uh, now we can get on to the fun part. So for the demo. Um, I, again, I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. And uh, hopefully, you can follow along if you want. I know sometimes the download can take a moment here. So don't feel sad if, if it does. Um, but uh, I believe these will be up uh, after the conference as well. So um, firstly, the prereqs are extremely simple. So you do not need to write any Java code. But you do need to make sure that you have Java 8 or 11 installed on your machine. So then. Just make sure you've got that. Make sure you're on the right version. Download the current stable snapshot release of Flink. So there's just a link in the docs there. And then you untar it and um, CD in there. And that's it. So that is all of your prereqs. And then you can jump in. So all you have to do, start a cluster. And at this point, you'll be able to open up. I'll wait for it to. Uh, yeah, so then you can open up your the Flink UI. So just here on localhost. Ignore all my <laughs> tabs and things there. Um, and this just comes out of the box of Flink. So again, it's just localhost. It, everything is just right there. It's super fast. And uh, then you can get started on your SQL client. So all of this is in real time. So it's very fast. Um, so once, oh, and also, the, uh, I'm just using the most basic uh, way to start up the SQL client. You can also explicitly use embedded mode as well. So you are not going to miss that you are in the SQL client. There's definitely no, did this work? Because you will immediately see this gigantic squirrel. <laughs> it doesn't even scroll all the way. So uh, if you do not see a gigantic squirrel, then something is wrong. So uh, it's a very quick way to know that you know either you're in or you aren't. So uh, as a side note, too, the client does support a couple different modes for maintaining and visualizing your results. So you can also um, add some different configurations while you're starting it up. So there's a table mode. So that materializes results in memory. And the visualization is going to be in a regular, just paginated table. The changelog mode does not actually materialize uh, results and visualizes the result stream. Um, and But it consists of these insertions and retractions. So that's one option. One note with that is in order for that mode to stay really responsive, since those results are stored in the Java heap, that change log mode uh, will only show the latest 1,000 changes. So there's other things you can do to configure that, but that's just kind of the, the default there. And the last mode is Tableau mode. So this is more like your traditional way that will display the results on the screen just directly in Tableau format. And the displaying content is going to be influenced by the query execution type for that one. Um, so then this is really basic. 
but this is my like my big PSA is that I always check the built-in hello world function because it is a really fast way to find out if something is wrong. So you've gotten into the SQL client, that's super easy. You got your gigantic squirrel, you know you're in, but you could potentially, there could potentially still be something else. And before you throw a bunch of uh, queries in there that you care about, um, I like to check this just to make sure that you don't, for instance, have, you know, you've overridden your, your default port somewhere, or, um, you know, if you're doing all this from scratch, you are probably not gonna have any of these issues. But if you already have an older version of Flink downloaded somewhere, your uh, cluster version and your client version may not be the same. So you just wanna make sure, and I, I really do just like doing this little test real fast just to make sure <laughs> that like, okay, this is gonna work. And it's not just some silly thing that, uh, you know, versioning or, or ports or something. Um, and again, trying to make just the absolutely most basic example here. So in this one, I'm creating a table and reading just from a local CSV file. I picked something I was already using in my personal life. This is um, a bunch of friends contributed to this fake journal or diary titles for their experiences during quarantine. We wanted to keep it funny, but also still really inclusive and just have kind of a relatable way to share feelings that came up this past year. And people got so into it. I wait within like a week, I had over a hundred submissions back in like April, May of last year uh, from friends and family and coworkers and it spread all over Slack spaces and text messages. So I was like, you know what? I just wanna create an easy pipeline so that anyone can just add it themselves into this pipeline. Um, and in this case, I'm just doing it as a CSV they can add to you and then I can just continuously read from it. Um, and then I can start to quickly sort and determine and do, you know, use some more interesting uh, things with SQL, SQL on it and, uh, you know, determine which ones have been produced. We're making these like fake book covers and which ones were work safe for people to, to share at work and things like that. So just a nice kind of real world, uh, but very basic example here. Um, so that's it. So then you enter that, you get this nice display here. And as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different modes to make this look a little bit nicer. So uh, next time around, I will I have that in the demo too, where you'll actually be able to see the full uh, the full titles there for some of those. Um, so again, a lot of different options for configuring your visuals there, which is nice. And then one note is that the SQL client provides output in this you know real time, but read only fashion. So if you want to store results for you know a report or a dashboard, you do need to write out to another table. So this can be achieved really easily just with an insert into statement. And once submitted there, this will just run and store the results into that sync table directly. And that is really nice because it does that instead of loading the results into the system memory. So again, all of this is optimized for simplicity and performance. So just keeping that super easy. So with that, since we're a bit limited on time, I actually grabbed this um, these images from my one of my old coworkers who has done an amazing job contributing to this. There is a really awesome Flink SQL cookbook that my coworkers put together. So this is where we regularly share hands-on examples and patterns and use cases for Flink SQL. And there is so much in there. I think people were contributing almost on a weekly basis for a while. So you can find examples of just about everything from the most basic things to all different configurations for each different basic thing you can do to more advanced things. So it, I definitely recommend it. And I will actually have a uh, links to that at the end as well. Uh, just one more example. There's also some really nice little demos. So there's some demos in the Flink SQL cookbook, uh, mostly using the, uh, the Viverica platform there. And with that, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I've got my my Twitter. I'm actually gonna be taking a little bit of time off of social media just next week, but I will respond this week and the week after. And uh, I've got some other mostly stream processing and nerding out on data analytics things on my Medium account and, uh, and website there. Feel free to also email me if you have questions about this. And I know there's a lot on here, so I actually have an easier way to grab this. Um, here. There we go. I promised. Uh, so easy way to grab it. Um, I actually am still uploading the links right now, but uh, so I save, save the QR code and then uh, that'll send you to my website and then all of those links will be available by end of the week. So 
And with that, um, thank you all. Oh, an extra shout out to my uh, my old coworker Marta, who did some of the um, all of the sequel cookbook um, things there. So huge thank you to all of you for coming, and it's been so great to see you all um, in <laughs> virtually anyway. And a huge thank you to Nina and all of the um, all of the conference staff as well. Okay, thanks for your talk. It was really interesting. Uh, I want to check just the questions to see what we have there. Uh, okay, so since we have only one question, uh, it says, how rich are the querying capabilities compared with normal SQL? What was it? I missed the first part. Sorry. How rich are the capabilities of Flink SQL versus normal SQL? Oh, so because it's and if I, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, because it's all as I mentioned earlier, like based on Apache Calcite, it's it's going to be you're going to have the same capabilities there as uh, just ANSI and standard SQL. So it's uh, that was something that was really important is to be able to keep that um, keep all of that as similar as possible on all different all those different levels. So okay. yeah, no, and if I, I, I if I misunderstood that too, feel yeah. free to. Um, Feel free to also like ping me too, and I can give you more detailed uh, example of that as well if you want. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask one question that I have that uh, maybe uh, is: uh, Can we mix these like steps in the middle? Let's say I want to clean some initial data just with SQL and then do more stuff, or in the middle, or. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to. And there's actually, um, I would definitely recommend the. I'm trying to think if there's a specific example. I think there is some examples of that in the cookbook, but don't quote me on that yet. <laughs> um, but that's something I can post. Um, I'll try to find that and maybe post it to Twitter uh, later. Um, and there's also, there's a couple other really good talks that, that do a bunch more things like that, a bunch more deep dives into Flink SQL. So there's a couple, um, I can also, is there a good place for me to, to add some of those links? So I think I'm only in the private chat here, so I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose, but well, anyway, they, yeah. people can okay. follow you. And so on the break. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because I can. Uh, I can try to link you to some, some more resources on that. Yeah. 